the mission is still there. No matter what happens, no matter what comes in the future, no matter what happens, there is still a mission, and Paul was dedicated to that mission. We read in uh, chapter number 10, verse 1, look at really quickly what, what Paul says in, uh, in verse 1 there. He says that he wishes, and it was his, his desire that all Israel should be saved. That was, his, that was his mission. That was his desire. And how many of you, your mission is that your, your neighbors and your coworkers and your family would be saved? And that's mine as well. And so amidst the current events of the day, amidst uh, maybe the current events of your own life, and many of us have events in our life. How many have events in your life? How many have some events you'd like to cancel? Amen? <laughs> and uh, Just the way that it goes. But even in amidst all of that, let me encourage you, there is a mission that you are a part of that you are a part of. Let me give you three thoughts today. First is this, number one, let's talk about the importance of this mission, the importance of this mission. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. The amazing statement that, I, that we just read that Paul made, the amazing thing about that isn't necessarily the statement itself. But what's amazing about that, mistake, that, that statement is the man who wrote it. Paul the apostle said, this. It's my heart's desire that Israel might be saved. And if you remember correctly, it wasn't too long ago that it was Paul's mission to destroy the church. It was his mission to find men and women who believed in Christ and to destroy them. Paul used to be a Pharisee. By the way, the Pharisees hated Christ. They hated Christians. They hated everything they stood for. And so Paul's job was to hunt Christians down, to hail them, the Bible says, to commit them to prison, to commit them, even in some cases, execution, as it was in the case of Stephen. Paul, uh, on the road to Damascus, you can read in Acts chapter number 9, he meets the Lord, and uh, he gets saved there, and God comes screaming into Paul's life and says, what are you doing? And his life completely, how many of you that God came screaming into your life at one point, changed you completely? And Paul's attitude changed. His heart was changed. Everything about him was changed. His, his desires changed. His, his, uh, his, his philosophies changed. But you know what else changed about Paul? His mission changed. He had a mission change. He was walking in one direction. He was finding Christians. He was taking them to prison. He was finding Christians. He was, you know, uh, he, 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 those that, that, that stoned Stephen, they laid their coats at the feet of apostle, of the, the, the then Saul, the, would be the apostle Paul. And he was going in that direction, and he completely changed directions. And now he had a brand new mission in his life. When Paul met Jesus, he didn't just adjust his life slightly. When Paul met Jesus, he didn't just take on a few changes in his life. When Paul met Jesus, he didn't just add Jesus to his already busy schedule. No, When Paul met Jesus, his mission changed. His life's mission completely changed. As a matter of fact, uh, when Paul met Jesus, when Paul met uh, when Paul met the Lord, his his life changed so drastically that even the disciples weren't sure about it. Amen. (laughs) He went to go uh, he went to go see some disciples, and they thought, "Are you sure about that? Are you sure that this is this is Paul? This is Paul. Are you sure this is the right guy?" And Paul changed. His mission completely changed. By the way, you and I, when we got saved, our eternity didn't just change. I'm thankful my eternity changed. The moment I accepted Christ as my Savior, I was bound for a place called hell. And when I accepted Christ as my Savior, that that eternal destiny was changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I mean, literally, the Bible says that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm thankful that I didn't have to go to church for five years and follow some program and confess my sins to somebody and say so many prayers and give so much money and, and, and live a certain way. I'm so glad that when I trusted Christ as my Savior, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I'm just thankful today that even while I was a wicked, and I still am a wicked sinner, he died for me, he forgave me of every sin I ever did, and the moment in time where I prayed and trusted Christ as my Savior, He changed my heart, and He changed my destiny. 
I'm no longer headed for hell. and I'm headed for heaven. I know today. I know as sure as I'm standing here. I know as sure as I'm going to have, I think, the Habit Burger today. No, I'm having pupusas today. I mean, like El Salvadorian food. Amen. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. That's angel food right there. Amen. I'm sure as I'm going to have lunch today. I know when I die, I'm going to open my eyes and see Jesus. I'm going to heaven. I know that for sure. But you know what? When I got saved and when you got saved, listen up, look up here. He didn't just change our destiny. He changed our mission. He changed our mission. Christian, your mission is not to make money. That's not your mission. Your mission is not to have the biggest house on the block. Your mission is not to have the most followers on YouTube. Your mission is not to, and you fill in the blank, that's not your mission. See, what's my mission? Do you see these flags on the wall? This is your new mission. Say, well, I don't want that mission. Well, that's what you signed up for. I didn't know I was signing up for that. Well, I'm telling you right now. When you trusted Christ as your Savior, you signed up for this mission. You say, well, what part of that mission do I have? We'll get into that, what our part is. And I'm thankful today that that not everybody has the, uh, the, the, the whatever it is that God gives you to preach. Not everybody has whatever it is that God gives you to maybe be a missionary to a foreign field, but every person in this room, God has given you something to be a part of the mission, and everybody can be. Paul's mission changed. Paul, Stephen, Philip, all these people that we read about in the New Testament, we read about them, their mission changed. I think about Philip. Philip was just a regular guy, Acts chapter number 8. Philip was just like anyone else in this room. He wasn't a paid preacher. He wasn't a a sent missionary. uh, Philip was just a guy who was chosen to help. Stephen, by the way, was just a guy who was chosen to help. They're just regular people like you and me, but their mission changed. Their mission changed. May I ask you this morning, when you met Jesus, I mean, when you really met him, Did your mission change? Has your mission changed? Is it the same thing that it was before you met Christ? It it shouldn't be. It should not be. When you meet Christ, your mission changes. When you met the Lord and you recognize what he's done for your life and you realize that when you follow Christ, Jesus said, if any man will follow after me, then let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Many of us, we don't want to carry the cross. We want to carry a box, as big a box as we can find, as much stuff as we can put in that box. We're not, we're not called to carry a box. We're not called to build a home. We're not called to buy a nice car. We're not called to build a company. And I know that we do those things, and that's fine. But our job as Christians is to pick up our cross and to follow him. That's our new mission, amen? Why is this mission so important? Letter A, the mission is critical. May I add the word eternally? The mission is eternally critical. Look at verse 14. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How? How are they going to call on him in whom they have not believed? I focus on those words. I just want you to see those words. And listen, I I want you to pay attention to these two words. How then? These are words of desperation. This gives us the idea that without this plan, without the gospel being spread, how then are they going to believe? The mission of the gospel is eternally critical. If there are no preachers, how then? If there are no churches to send the preachers, how then? Salvation cannot come through any other means. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We like to think that, uh, that, that, we like to think that someone's going to do the job for us, but may I say, we're all part of the mission. We're all part of it. Salvation cannot come by other means. Some are waiting today for a celebrity to get saved. And maybe if, you know, maybe if somebody really famous got saved, dude, can I just tell you, the Bible says that, that God doesn't choose the, the great, mighty, rich things of the world. He chooses the weak things. Amen. He chooses you and me. How many of this morning are weak? Come on now. How many of this morning are weak? <laughs> He's chosen you to get the job done. Amen. And some of us thinking, well, now that Kanye West is a Christian, we're, how many think that didn't work out very well, did it? Well, now that so-and-so is a Christian, boy, boy, God's going to use that. No, God's going to use you and me. We are a part of the mission, amen? I'm thankful that I get to be a component to his mission. 
I think about uh, Brother Angel, who's going to be here tonight, Ben Angel. He's a great missionary. Missionary to Madagascar. Does anybody know where Madagascar is on the map? And uh, several of you. And uh, you know Madagascar because you've seen the penguins in Madagascar, amen? And uh, my dad said the other day, we were driving the car, I mentioned him, he goes, I wonder if he knows the penguins, you know? And my dad said he probably gets that question a lot. I said, please don't ask him that when he comes here. But uh, Brother brother Angel, and I got a picture of them. You guys got that? Can you put that up there? And uh, he's coming tonight. And just a wonderful family, loves the Lord. And uh, Brother Angel could have been a pastor in America. He could have done whatever. But God called him to this, this little tiny place in, in the middle of nowhere, Madagascar. And I thought about that, and I, I looked up Madagascar, and did you know there are 30 million people in Madagascar? I don't know how many missionaries I'm sure he'll tell us tonight. It's about the same amount of people there are in California, a few more people in California, about 40 million. Well, that's a big country. I don't know how many missionaries are, but how many thankful that Ben is going there? And how many thankful there's a church that sent him there? We're all part of the mission, and, and listen, it might not be, God might not be calling you to Madagascar. That might not be what God is calling you to do, but, but the mission is critical. It's, it's critical. It's eternally critical because those people in Madagascar, if somebody doesn't go tell them, they're not going to hear. 